Happy trails to you. The dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood, the man who sells and services the elegant new 54 Dodge presents the Roy Rogers Radio Show. Yes, folks, it's the Roy Rogers Radio Show for the whole family. Adventure, suspense, mystery, and music. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, the Mellow Man, and an all-star cast. And now, here to greet you with a song and a story are Roy and Dale. The spell of Indian magic. If you believe it, then the spell can capture you. Well, hi there, folks. Greetings to the whole family. That song they're playing is called The Spell of Indian Magic. It's a brand new song composed especially for the story I'm going to tell you tonight by our musical conductor, Frank Worth, and our director, Ralph Rose. It's kind of a strange song, and our story is a very strange story. It all began when Dale and Pat and me went up to Denver, Colorado to take part in the show. It was a kind of a Wild West show complete with Indians and cowboys. We had a famous medicine man on the bill, Chief Osego. Well... We just finished our final performance and we were back in the tent loading up bullet and trigger when a girl called to us. Roy? Dale? Yes? I was afraid I'd missed you. It's Betty, Roy. You remember, Betty Nolan from Manitou. Sure. How are you, Betty? Oh, not so good, Roy. I read in the papers that you folks were up here and I... Well, I, I thought maybe you could help. Help? Well, I know what a good friend you've always been to my grandfather, so I... Well, I, I, I thought you ought to know that he's dying. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, what's he dying of, Betty? Well, that's just the trouble, Roy. We aren't sure. What do you mean? Well, the doctors can't find a thing wrong with him. According to all his tests, Grandfather should be a perfect physical specimen. I don't understand. Well, neither did I. Until yesterday when I found this in the barn. What is it? It's a doll. A little doll with pins stuck in it. That's right, Roy. I think Grandfather's being killed by an Indian curse. In just a moment, Roy and Dale will return with part one of a story about a curse, a spell, and Indian magic. Here's why Dodge is today's biggest car buy. The great new 54 Dodge is the lowest priced V8 in its field. That's right. Now you can buy a beautiful 54 Dodge at the lowest price of any big car V8. And no other car brings you all the big car features of the dependable Dodge. Full 150 horsepower gives you smooth, powerful starts and proven performance. Sleek lines and natural beauty make Dodge the car you'll be proud to own. Spacious Dodge interiors let you enjoy real roominess and comfort. Plenty of headroom and legroom. And remember this. The price you pay for a Dodge V8 is the lowest in its field. Drive in and see the beautiful, long, low 54 Dodge at your nearby Dodge Plymouth dealers. And if you want a good, dependable used car... Be sure you see the first choice Roy Rogers specials your Dodge dealer has for you. And now back to Roy Rogers and Dale Evans in part one of tonight's story. Drink your coffee, Betty. You'll feel better. Thank you. Well, tell me about this doll again. When did you find it? Yesterday. Well, what did you do when you found it? Well, I, I didn't know what it was at first, so I took it to Jack. Jack? Jack West, my fiancé. Well, he told me about the legend of the Indian devil doll. You mean the old stories that witches and medicine men used to make these dolls in the likeness of their enemies and then stick pins in them? That's right. Finally, they stick a pin in the spot where a person's heart is located... And the person dies. After what Jack told me, all I could think of was Chief Tache. Who's he? He's the chief medicine man of the Navajos. People around these parts say there's bad blood between Grandfather and Chief Tache. And you went to see this Chief Tache? Oh, no, no, Dale. I, I, I went to see the sheriff. Why the sheriff? Well, as you know, Grandfather is a full-blooded Navajo. 
He believes in the powers of the medicine man. You mean you think that the medicine man has something to do with causing your grandfather's illness? Oh, I don't know, Dale. I, I just don't know. But why did you go to the sheriff? Well, to show him the doll and tell him about grandfather. I should have known better. Somehow or other, it got all over town and the gossip spread to the other ranchers. Next thing we knew, there were threats against Chief Taché. So the sheriff put him in jail under protective custody. I see. And now the people think that this medicine man made the doll and put a curse on your grandfather. Yes. Betty, what's this bad blood between the chief and your grandfather that you mentioned? Well, years ago, my grandfather was known as Chief Blue Cloud. During the last Indian Wars, he took the side of the army and fought against his own people, including Chief Tashe. The local Indians have never forgiven him for it. I see. Well, Betty, it sounds like there's heap big trouble down your way. Uh, would you like for us to go down there and see what we can find out? Oh, Roy, if you only would. Stay here with Dale a minute. I'll tell Pat. Pat? Oh, Pat. Yeah, Roy? Pat, get bullet and trigger ready for a little ride. We're going to Manitou the first thing in the morning. In the morning? Oh, now, Roy, you, you ain't going to do any traveling tomorrow, are you? Why not? What's the matter with tomorrow? What's the matter with tomorrow? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's just Friday the 13th, that's all. <laughs> Betty, we've been so busy talking about devil dolls and your grandfather that I haven't had a chance to ask you anything about your fiancé. Jack? Oh, he's a wonderful man, Dale. What kind of work is he in? He works for the United Museum. He's a paleontologist. An uh, alien? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> a paleontologist, Pat. He hunts for old fossil bones. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, him and Bullet ought to get along fine. <laughs> they do the same kind of work. Oh, <laughs> bad. The town's just up ahead. Hmm, that's strange. What? That crowd up the street there. Uh, where? That's the jail. Roy. Now, take it easy. We'll see what's going on. It's a mob, Roy. This looks serious. Come on. <laughs> Folks! Folks, get back! Don't do anything you'll be sorry for! Wait a minute, people! Hold on now! Thanks, mister. Who are you? Roy Rogers. Who are you? Jack West. Oh, yeah. Betty's fiancé. Just stand your ground, Jack. This mob will break up in a minute. Go on, now! Go on home where you belong. That's better. That's the idea. <laughs> that was a close one. Good thing you came along when you did, Mr. Rogers. Where's the sheriff? Went over to Colorado Springs on business. He deputized me and told me to watch things while he was gone. Well, where's Chief Tashe? Inside. I'd like to talk to him for a minute, if I may. Well, sure. Come on. <laughs> Chief Tashe. I'm Roy Rogers, Chief. I come here to find out if you made a devil doll and tried to work Indian magic on Chief Blue Cloud. No, untrue. I not make bad medicine. Only good. Do you know what's wrong with Chief Blue Cloud? Yes. He is dying because of devil doll. Who's responsible? Do you know? No, but can guess. Yes? Evil spirit in human body. Great worker of evil magic. Spirit called Wanga. Wanga, huh? Well, whose body has the spirit of Wanga taken? Not know. You're sure you're telling me the truth? Chief Tashe, do not lie. Any luck? Yeah, it seems all I have to do is find a human being whose body has been taken over by an evil spirit called Wanga. Make yourselves at home, folks. I'll see how Grandfather is. Nancy! Nancy! 
Yes, ma'am. How is he, Nancy? I think he is sleeping. Good. I'll just look in on him. Nancy, these are my friends, Roy Rogers, Dale Evans, and Pat Brady. How do you How do? do? How do you do? Well, make some sandwiches, will you, Nancy? I imagine our guests are starved. Yes, ma'am. I'll have them ready right away. Excuse me a minute, will you? I'll see how Grandfather is. Well, sit down, folks. Make yourselves at home. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a charming Indian girl. Who is she? Nancy? Well, uh, I guess you'd call her a maid, but she's really more than that. Her father worked for Betty's grandfather. And then when he passed away, Mr. Blue Cloud sent her east to school. When she returned, she became a kind of companion to Betty and her grandfather. Jack, what about this so-called feud between Chief Blue Cloud and Chief Tashi? Well, it dates back to the last Indian War. Chief Blue Cloud took the part of the army. Yes, I, I know about that, but is there anything more to it? Uh, anything you can think of? Mm. Well, of course, there's the ranch. This ranch? Yes. It was a gift from the federal government to Mr. Blue Cloud in exchange for his services to the army during the war, the army that conquered the Navajos. Hmm. I see. Roy! It's Betty. Come on. <laughs> Roy! 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 Well, what is it, Betty? What's the matter? Grandfather, he's dead. Roy, look. Yeah, it's the devil doll. With a pin in its heart. Uh, Roy, there's a piece of paper stuck to the pin. What does it say? There's one word on the paper, Dale. Just one word. Wonga. In just a moment, Roy and Dale will return with part two of tonight's story. Action. Power. Beauty. That's the Dodge for 54. It's the car for you. Those long, low, sleek, flowing lines are good looking. They look natural. There's nothing awkward, nothing artificial about a Dodge. It's just a massive, rugged, really beautiful big car. Notice I said big car. You get so many big car features in this new Dodge. There's big car power. Record-breaking power when Dodge smashed 196 official AAA records for speed and endurance. There's big car luxury, too. You'll find comfort and real roominess inside the new Dodge. Plenty of big car headroom and shoulder room and leg room. Plenty of big car elbow room. And best of all, there's big car value in a new Dodge. The 54 Dodge costs you less than any other V8 in its field. That's right. Dodge prices are the lowest of any big car V8. Stop in and see your friendly Dodge Plymouth dealer. Stop in and see the beautiful, long, low 54 Dodge. And now back to Roy and Dale and the story about a curse, a spell, and Indian magic. <laughs> Why are you so restless, Roy? I'm sorry, but I've been trying to figure out something. What? When was the last time you saw that devil doll? Devil doll? Why, when Betty showed it to you after the performance, I guess. Why? <laughs> what happened to it after Betty showed it to me? She put it back in her purse. I saw her. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I don't understand, Roy. What are you driving at? I can't figure out how that doll got into Mr. Blue Cloud's bed, unless... Roy, you mean you think... Betty put it there? I don't know, Dale. Where's Betty, Dale? She's lying down. Maybe we ought to answer it. Excuse me, Miss Nolan is resting. I'd better answer the phone. Hello? No, she's lying down. I see. Yes, he's here. Just a moment, please. I'll call him. Mr. West would like to speak to you, Mr. Rogers. Oh, uh, thank you. Hello? They did? What'd they find? Oh, nothing, huh? Yeah, I see. Of course, if the coroner found nothing suspicious, naturally, they'll enter it as a natural death. Okay, Jack, thanks. I'll tell Betty. See you later. 
Dale. Pat. Yeah. Yes. How'd you like to go on a sightseeing tour of an Indian reservation? Hey, Roy. Looks like they're having some kind of a celebration. Dale, you and Pat wait here a minute. I'll go see what this is all about. Well, if it isn't Chief Taché, I thought you were in jail. Released this morning, Mr. Rogers. Sheriff, no, I am innocent. He does? How? White man's doctor make examination of Blue Cloud. Find nothing wrong. Blue Cloud died natural death. I see. But you know that's not true, don't you? White man say true. You go now, Mr. Rogers. You not welcome here. One more question, Chief, then I'll leave. Are you sure you don't know what human being the spirit of Wonga inhabits? Wonga spirit make bad medicine. I make only good medicine. Know nothing about Wanga. Okay, Chief. If that's the way you want it. I guess that's the way it'll have to be. For the time being, anyway. Did you find out anything, Roy? No, not much, except that when we find an evil spirit named Wanga, we'll know the truth about this. Boy, it sure is a hot day. Whew. Say, Roy, there's a water hole down there. H how about giving the horses a drink? Good idea, Pat. Let's go. Isn't this a part of the Blue Cloud Ranch, Roy? Yes, it is, Dale. Sure is fine country, isn't it? Yeah. Pat? Yeah? I want you to turn around and head back to town. Oh, Roy. In this heat? I'm sorry, but this is important. Go to Western Union and send a telegram to Chief Osego. Tell him I need his help and ask him to join me at the Blue Cloud Ranch as soon as possible. Why do you want Chief Osego, Roy? Well, there's an old saying that I think fits this particular situation. Fight fire with fire. Here's the water hole. Who, Trigger? Who, boy? Whoa, Ooh. buttermilk. Whoa, you. Whoa, whatever your name is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Red. <laughs> Dog. Darn it. Whoa! Whew. Roy, you reckon this animule is what they mean by the flying red horse? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Trigger. Take a drink, boy. Trigger, what's the matter with you? Come on, buttermilk. Nice, cool water. <laughs> hey, that's funny. The horses have their tongues hanging out, but they won't touch it. Yeah, I see. Well, that reminds me of another old saying. You can lead a horse to water. Better get going into town, Pat, and send that telegram. This whole thing has suddenly started to make sense. May I have your attention, please? I want to thank you all for coming to this lonely water hole at this time of night, especially those of you from the reservation and Chief Medicine Man Taché. I can assure you that this is not a joke or a party. It's very serious. The people in this community believe that Chief Taché had something to do with the death of Mr. Blue Cloud. I don't. So I've asked another great medicine man to come here and help us learn the truth. This is Chief Osego. Yo, Taché. Sukis. Right. Chief Osego is going to make big medicine, powerful medicine that will dispel an evil spirit known by the name of Wanga. Will you take over, Chief Osego? I call upon the great spirit of fire to light the water before us. I light this torch. I place it upon the water. Behold! Don't be afraid, folks. Don't anybody move. 
As you can see, the water's burning. Chief Osego truly has big magic, big medicine. And now, for even stronger magic, at my request, the chief has made a devil doll in the image of the evil spirit who is really responsible for Mr. Blue Cloud's death. The chief will now work his magic on the doll and the one who is guilty. Hairs from a comb, pieces of cloth, bits of leather, three-toed sloth, string of silk, bull weevil, all baptized on the altar of evil. What's he doing, Hairs boy? He's weaving a spell, Dale. And when he's through, cloth, we may know who's been at the bottom of, of this. I stuck a pin into its arm, and lo, the arm hung limp beside. I stuck a pin into its arm, and lo, the arm hung limp beside. I stuck a pin... No, no, my arm, my arm! Roy, it's Jack Wentz. Jack, Jack! Stop! Please, take the pin out of the doll, please! I didn't do it. It was Nancy. She did it. She made me do it. He lies. Get her, Pat. I'll get her. I'll kill him. I'll kill him with magic. You'll see. You'll see! What made you suspect Jack West, Roy? Well, when I saw oil floating on the water, I realized why the horses wouldn't drink it. That gave me an idea that there could be a motive for killing Betty's grandfather. Killing? Why, well, I thought you said he died naturally. Well, that's what the coroner said, Pat. Psychologists might tell you a different story. Well, anyway, after I got the idea that somebody would benefit by Mr. Blue Cloud's death, I knew it had to be either Betty or her fiancé. I wired the United Museum in New York and found out that Jack West had spent seven years in Africa doing research on black magic in addition to looking for fossils and old bones. He believes in devil dolls as much as Mr. Blue Cloud did. Is that the reason he actually felt a pain in his arm when Chief Osego had everybody under the hypnotic spell? That's right. Well, I still don't get it. Where did this Nancy or Wonga fit in? She was in love with Jack West. He promised to split the money with her after he married Betty and sold the oil rights to the ranch. It was Nancy who took the devil doll from Betty's purse and stuck the pen in its heart in front of Mr. Blue Cloud. The shock killed him. By the way, where is Jack West? He took out of here this morning like that red horse I've been riding. <laughs> oh, he must have been doing 60. Roy, you don't mean you let him get away. I couldn't stop him, Dale. Actually, he committed no crime. At least no crime that's recognized by the law. Good morning, Roy. Well, good morning. Dale. Good morning. Hi, Pat. How are you, Chief Osego? Fine, thank you. I could not help overhearing what you were discussing. I would not worry about Mr. West if I were you. He will receive his due punishment. Wanga has promised it. Wanga? You mean Nancy? Oh, now, Chief. Don't tell me an old showman like you believes in that stuff. I saw her practicing her black medicine late last night. She called upon the water spirits to do her evil. Fire spirits? Water spirits? If you ask me, there's only one kind of spirits that I can put my faith in. Of course, I'll never touch them. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Oh? Yes, Sheriff. This is Roy Rogers. What? Oh? Yes, I see. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Thanks for calling. What did the Sheriff want, Roy? He called to tell us about Jack Witt. It seems he ran into a culvert. Was he hurt? His car turned over in an irrigation ditch. He was pinned beneath the car in the ditch. He drowned in two feet of water. And folks, that's the whole story of what happened the time Dale and Pat and me ran into the spell of Indian magic. Heed the words of Indian medicine man. Do not scoff at Indian medicine man. For many strange things can happen. I've heard my father tell. How Indian medicine man makes magic spell The spell of Indian magic If you believe it, then the spell can capture you 
A tiny doll of Tom Tom, a powder in the fire. The spell of Indian magic, the spell of mad desire. Here are the Mellow Men. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Job rated truck. It's easy to steer, you can turn on a dime. Dodge is easy to load, saves your work and time. Wider seats and a better view, ride so comfortable, you say. There's a better deal for the man at the wheel of a Dodge Job rated truck. See Dodge today. Yes, friends, and here's still another reason why Dodge trucks mean a better deal for the man at the wheel. Sensational new Power Dome V8s, the world's most modern truck engines, are yours only with Dodge job-rated trucks. Thanks to the exclusive dome-shaped combustion chambers of Dodge truck Power Dome V8s, you get more power from regular gas, more miles to the gallon, more efficient performance than any other mass-produced V8s. New Power Dome V8s really save you money every mile you travel. So drop into your dependable Dodge truck dealers soon for a demonstration. Well, that does it for tonight, folks. See you next Thursday, same time. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. Happy trails with Dodge, the car that gives you more. The Roy Rogers Radio Show is produced under the supervision of Art Rush and directed by Ralph Rose. Tonight's story was written by Ralph Rose and Charles Smith. Music arranged and conducted by Frank Worth. Production assistant, Virginia White. Tonight's all-star cast included Pat Brady, The Mellow Men, Gene Bates, Gene Tatum, Marvin Miller, Tom Holland, Jan Arvan, and Jack O'Shea. Join us again next Thursday evening at this same time when the dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood will again bring you the transcribed Roy Rogers radio show. This is Lou Crosby speaking for the man who sells and services Dodge job-rated trucks and the elegant new 54 Dodge.